Takže dobré dopoledne. Já vás vítám na třetím ročníku festivalu Prague Dark Forum. Děkuji, že jste přišli. Děkuji těm, kteří nás sledují online. Good evening. Uh, good morning. I want to welcome you to the third uh, Prague Guitar Forum. Thank you for coming in person and thank you to people who hooked up to, to the stream. Včera večer jste mnozí z vás byli svědky nádherného koncertu Tilmana Hopštoka, který navíc dnes ještě bude přednášet na téma polyfonie v loutnových fugách Johana Sebastiana Bacha. Takže já vám přeji příjemný zážitek. So for those of you who last night um, uh, participated in the concert of Tilman, um, he actually is so kind to come again or today and um, give us a lecture about lute compositions and um, polyphony. Is that correct? That's yeah. correct. <laughs> and so without further ado, let's <laughs> get started. Okay. So we can start. I'm very happy to be here uh, and we we'll have a nice audience and uh, it's a big pleasure for me to be here. Je pro mě velkým potěšením tady být. Máme krásno, krásné publikum. Když třeba maskama. <laughs> Ale vidím, že na očičkách se smějete. <laughs> okay, I have to take care not to talk too long, but you remember everything. <laughs> um, okay, uh, we were talking about polyphony and, and What means polyphon? Polyphon means everything which is more than one voice. Takže co znamená polyfonie? Víte asi všichni? Znamená to více než jeden hlas, jeden tón. So if you have a couple of chords, that means polyphonic music. Takže když, když je tam uh, několik chords, to je guitar string? Yeah, like a chord. Like, no, 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 a chord, like, no, like a minor. Yeah. A, uh, když, jsou, když tam jsou akordy, tak to vlastně znamená polyfonická Um, but when we talk about uh, polyphonic structure in music by Bach, uh, then it means much more than this. It, it, it means the correspondence and the dialogue, a trilogue between voices, like characters, like people who are talking together. Ale když mluvíme um, o polyfony v, u, u, třeba u Bacha, tak to neznamená jenom akord, nebo ty, ty tóny, ale znamená to i kam míří a ten dialog mezi těmi uh, linkami nebo triálog a jak se k sobě vztahují. Uh, and this where I would like to talk a little bit about with some examples playing and with the CD player. A o tom se dneska budeme bavit s nějakýma nahrávkama a s nějakýma ukázkama. So the interesting thing is, and the complicated thing and complex thing is that when we see a melody in Bach's music, it's very rare that the melody is not structured, done by two voices inside, you know, like a, a hidden voice. So this always or very often inside of a melody that we have a correspondence between two, like two persons. Tak ta melodie není vždycky v jednom, um, v jednom hlasu, ale je většinou někde schovaná. A, a mění se a dává se tam jakoby, um, třeba mi tam chvilku doprvo, pak ta melodie se přesune, jakoby cestuje po těch hlasech. Um, and we as interpreter, we have to decide, when we see a single voice in Bach's music, How we want to express it. So, a my jako uh, interpreti musíme dělat to rozhodnutí, když vidíme um, jeden jediný hlas a jak to chceme vyjádřit. And so i, as, as a part of, of this music, of course we are 90% interpreter, not composer, but when we create uh, uh, our interpretation, we decide how deep you want to go inside to show maybe the dialogue in between one voice or just to show the melody by itself. A když my vlastně jako interpreti, my jsme, když hrajeme, tak jsme 90% inter, uh, interpreti a je na nás, uh, jak, jakou, uh, jakou linku melodickou chceme jakoby zdůraznit, až kam se chceme dostat a co chceme vytáhnout na povrch. 
And this is just one little aspect in music by Bach. There are many, many more. Aspects of the Bach. Like, like harmony structure, you know, like articulation. So if, 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 if people ask me very often in master classes how I should play Bach, so I, I say I don't know. Because they are always, e even if you are more involved in the music, you have more questions than answers, which makes everything so open. So it's, that means even if we see more and more when you go deeper inside in the music, you have the problem, the luxury problem of many options how to show the music. Nastane luxusní problém a to je, jak, jak to vlastně ukázat, jak to vyjádřit. So, um, I think it's always good to, to investigate in the music and to read a lot, many books, but be já, aware... Já jsem zastáncem toho si hodně zjišťovat a číst hodně kni knih o té hudbě. But be aware of people who say, you cannot play Bach like this. Oh, people who say you have to play Bach like this. Uh, because in my experience during so many decades involving this music is that I'm very critical, but I have more questions and I'm less dogmatic than 30 years ago. Dogmatický? Dogmatický. Okay. <laughs> That sounds nice. <laughs> okay, so let us start now to go to the music. Uh, here I bring uh, a movement from the fifth cello suite, which is identical to the lute suite, um, BBV 995. Ze suite pro loutnu. A je to číslo this, this is the version for cello. Tohle je verze pro cello. And Může. this is the version for lute. A ta spodní je pro loutnu. Yeah. And this is the, the second part of the first movement and it's a fugato or fugue. Tohle say. je dru, uh, druhá část prvního, první části. A, a je to fugata. Fuga or fugato? Fugato. I think it's the same word in your language. <laughs> Um, so, so here we can see the theme. Takže tady nahoře vidíme to téma. And as you can see that we have this jump, which means we go into another voice. So I will... I will když vlastně tam je ten skok z toho F do toho A, tak se to přesouvá do jiného hlasu. So I will, uh, I will okay. demonstrate. So, so okay. when we play it as a melody, we have... But we also can uh, divide this melody into parts. Then we would have. So you can hear now this dialogue between the two voices. And the question now is how to play it, like... So I have a little bit the idea of two voices, but I don't leave... So we have just an idea of what it is. So, and, and when we continue here, in the lute version, then we have here the second voice, so here's the second entry. So, in the cello it's just the second, the second time, the same, but nothing. Um, go further. Um, so I, I played until uh, I, I, I just try it again, and you can see what I do. I'm 
So you can see everything. Yeah, and the problem now is to enlarge the polyphony in a lute with so many voices. And the trick he used is we have still two voices, so you see always two voices. But the graphic shows three voices, you see? Ale grafika ukazuje tři, jakoby v tom zapsání hned. Because up from here he starts to divide the theme into voices. So in to téma pak začne uh, jakoby rozkládat do těch linek, do těch hlasů. So in fact we have three voices, but also two voices. Takže vlastně máme tři, ale jenom dva. Yeah? Tři v notách a dva. And <laughs> then we have... Uh, Fact two voices. It's not more than here, finally, you know. But, to není víc než ty dva hlasy. but it looks different, and there's one thing Ale very interesting. Because normally, when we follow the theme, he shouldn't do. doing he changed one part of the fo- uh, of the theme he changed the octave Može on co udělal že v té jedné uh, části toho lasu uh, změnil oktávu So for the lute it wouldn't be a problem to play Pro lotu, to But in the cello it would be a problem the cello, cello does Why because the cello cannot play The cello cannot go below the lowest string because, yeah, because the, the, the key is C minor. It's very deep, very dark. So for the cello he needs to change this octave in a, instead of playing here, he needs to play these notes here. And that uh, that means you know. that the theme is is very flexible because sometimes you also do. Oh. So you always in the, during the piece you always change the octaves. Um, so what I did is when you, uh, I, I will play the, the lute version, the, a little part of the lute version. You can read it. It's okay. It's, it's okay to read. Or it's, too small? it's okay. Okay. Uh, Thank you. 
So what I did is now I wrote a version. Co jsem, co jsem udělal, uh, že jsem, jsem napsal verzi. That in the in the third theme here. V třetím tématu, kde začíná ten třetí ten třetí vstup. That I really wrote. Um, so I really wrote the version like this, but then I need needed to add a real third voice. A to, takže jsem vlastně napsal tohle a pak jsem potřeboval přidat opravdový třetí hlas. And I show you now the difference. Uh, so the original is. Uh, I show you this here. Yeah. Okay. And now my version. A teď moje verze. Say this is maybe he would do for a half chord when he had when you have two hands. Uh, and for this reason, I would like to show you this version. So you see here, this is uh, the lute version. Yeah, you see that. Yes. And this is my version I wrote transcribed for a half chord. A tohle je verze, to je spodní uh, čembalová uh, verze. Because the the version by Bach originally is a verze original, jako ten original. He's normally using only two voices and with his virtual two voices that he has three voices but still two voices. Vždycky používá ten koncept těch virtuálních dvou hlasů, kde možná někdy dostrojí. And I wrote a concept that we have really three voices all the time. A já jsem napsal koncept, kde vlastně tam jsou tři uh, celou dobu, tři ty hlasy. So, and this I would like to show you now. Can you, you can, maybe I do it a little bit like this. It's easier to read, yeah? And then I... Do you want me to go scrolling when you're playing? Okay. So no, 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 no. I do it. I do it. Better I do it. Um, so let's listen to it now. It's a live recording. I didn't play the harpsichord, so it is a very good harpsichord there. <laughs> Shall we try it again? I'm not sure that it will work. We can try it again, but maybe there's a problem with the... Okay. Let's do it again.
Okay. So and from this version, I wrote a transcription back for the guitar, so to simplify a little bit. But these things are not to make music better, but it makes uh, sense to understand what is behind, what is, what is the information behind when mm -hmm. we enlarge it, you know. The what could be, you know, what is inside in this concentrated, in this concentration of yeah. less yeah, notes. Yeah, so the purpose is not so that the music would be made better, but that it would be able to know what is in the minimum of all the information. So let us, is everything is clear? Everything is clear, thank you. So let, let us continue um, to another piece which is also very interesting because it's so it makes you drunk you know we now have a look to uh, sweet uh, um, BVV 996 uh, sweet um, the <laughs> BWV <laughs> Uh, I mean, he can say what he wants, I don't understand. Uh, so I cannot control what he is talking about. <laughs> okay. Uh, this is a very, very interesting piece, the, the first movement. Uh, the second part is a presto. And as you can see here, uh, just the beginning is one voice, and the rest is always in two or three voices. But when we look deeper inside, because nobody normally looks for that, we have a very long theme from here, here to here, and it and it's here. So, so when I play it, you can hear it. it's a very long theme. And when you look to the second voice, it is the same. It only starts a, a fifth below. So it is the same, so we could play it uh, as a... Uh, <laughs> But this is uh <laughs> <laughs> But it starts on here. I don't know where it starts. <laughs> okay. Uh, and um, so but we don't realize it. The, the long thing because there's always this dialogue. <laughs> Because finally we have it's only it's just a, a, a kind of big big sequences. So we could we could finish it, uh, do it endless. But once you have um, then it finishes. Yeah? So two, two uh, segments are very, very important in this theme. So two segments that are so important in these things. Because the, the, the most, the longest part of the theme is not very characteristic. Very, we cannot follow it as a big theme. It's, it's a little element, you know, which. The long element, the or the long part, the long theme. Není ničím jako charakteristický nebo výrazný, ale jsou ten malinký elementy. So for that reason it's so important that we have to, to find the, the beginning jump. So, to je skok, ten, ten první... so 
always when we hear this jump, so we can, ah, here's the theme. So. And, <coughs> but those, um, this idea uh, between this dialogue, we have very often in Baroque music. For example, we have a fugue, a little fugue by Handel, which has the same idea. So this di da di da dum, this is a motif you find very, very often in Baroque music. So what, when we now listen to the to the first uh, part the, of of this fugue, which is here, and you can hear. You can hear when the theme finishes, you know, because it's of the So, so when we play this music, it's very important to keep a little, to, to clear up a little bit where are these jumps to, to hear when the theme finishes and when it starts. And I think in this little fugato, in this little presto, it is like in a, in a marriage uh, since. 50 years or 40 years, you're always together. <laughs> so, when we look, maybe we go inside here or here. Let's go inside here. So, you hear. It's always this, this couple, you know, two persons always talking together. And more or less in the same way, you know. So what we see here, which is so interesting, is uh, that we start here, here, and we go down to E, we go down to B, we go down to F sharp. So the, the whole piece goes through the whole range. And so finally, we have this um, impression. It would have a fugue with f four voices because it goes through all the voices. No, no, I, I don't because the entry of the theme goes to, to the whole range of the lute or the guitar. Oh, okay. And so we have, you know, it sounds like well, a piece which is, is so many more voices. Yeah. So even if we, we start here is three voices or here you have three voices, three voices. But after a very short time it's always we come back to the dialogue, to two voices. So most of the pieces most of the piece maybe uh, 60% are two voices, but we have the impression of many more voices. It's a very good trick. So, what is strange is, you can hear this, <coughs> that always here we have the entry of the second voice one bar later. Yeah? Co je zajímavé, že to vždycky začíná o jeden, o jednu dobu, o jednu, o jeden tak. Yeah. And no. here you can hear the end. Di, 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 dum, bum, di, da, di, da. And here you have di, da, da, di, di, da, da, da. This is the second thing, but it changed to the middle voice. It starts in the bass and changed in the middle. Yeah? That's it's difficult, maybe, um, to understand. Is it bar, like one bar or one beat? Uh, like so, so, no, what, one bar. 
It's here, you know, the, this is the end of the theme. And here's the other end. Bamba, tidadi, bampidi, tidadi. Yeah? But the problem is that we have only one entry of the theme. Where's the other one? Že to, že to, že ten motiv, to téma tam vždycky uh, začíná o, o tak později, že to přináší do dalšího taktu. A kde tam je ten třetí teda? So, I will show you what I mean. Maybe then it's clear, more clear. Ček, 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 ček. So, let's have a look here. Já vám ukážu uh, praktický případ. This is what I said. This is the third entry. You see that? Mm -hmm. Jo, tady je ten třetí vstup. And up from here we have the dialogue. I play. But we miss the other entry. So if I put Ale, it, it's, uh, it's not there, you know? I, tam ta třetí, ta třetí vstup. So I put here, because uh, the first entry should be here. This is finally, the, this is the second entry. Ten první stup by měl být na, tý, na tom, uh, tom Cčku. Because here we continue as always. So I will play this from here in the original. And now I play this here. This is not Bach. understand what is the idea no we have two entries but this one is hidden so he doesn't show it Bach, you know so the 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 impression is that we have a third theme you know a third entry but in fact we have here the third and this would be the fourth <laughs> Takže vlastně jsme pod dojmem, nebo máme dojem, že tam jsou tři a vlastně když tam přijá ten třetí, tak ten dojem je jako, že tam jsou čtyři. Because when we go back here, look here, this is the fifth one and here this everything is clear, you know, here you can see that. He comes back to the both, to, the, to the couple, you know, to the marriage. On zase jde zpátky k tomu dialogu. Yeah. I will play from here. the dialogue, you know? So finally, everything sounds very um, compressed. We don't have so long intermissions. It's always the theme, always the theme. Takže vlastně není to jakoby, že tam jsou nějaký pauzy. Ale tím, že se to prostě střídá v těch v tom spektru, tak to zní jako, že, že to pořád je. And everything seems to be to rush always, because it's, it's always this dialogue and these two voices. Takže to má ten, ten flow prostě, že, že pořád to jede, že se pořád šlape, protože tam je pořád ten dialog, ať už mezi těmi. Very compressed, eh? and then we go further. Um, no, I do it here. When you look here, tak pojďme dále, když se podíváme tady. we have an entry, very strange, directly here. A new voice in the bass is coming in, but it seems to be inside the theme. Máme zajímavý vstup teď, protože 
vypadá, jako kdyby byl v tom tématu. I will play from here and then you can hear what, what I mean. Yeah? So it's just in the middle of the theme. Že to je vlastně uprostřed toho tématu, když sem přijde ten třetí hlas. But also here, if we go deeper inside, we can see two entries of the theme. Ale když se podíváme ještě hlouběji, tak vlastně vidíme dva vstupy toho tématu. This is the regional. You see here the bass comes inside. To je ten základní, bass přijde zevnitř. And this is the idea of Bach. A tohle je... The idea, I mean the theme. The yeah, this uh -huh. is the, the, the idea, the unspoken idea of Bach, you know, which is the hidden theme, yeah. you know. And this is the theme, the theme, the theme, the theme, the theme, the theme, the theme. I'll pr first play the original and then the virtual idea of Bach. I'll play the original, the original, and then the virtual idea. Idea, and the, the, uh, the funny thing is, you 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 listen how I continued from here. I did this. I continued with. Yes, like the the the, the sequence, the the, the, the sequence, mm -hmm. like the theme is doing. You know, yeah. is constructed. I will play from here, the vir virtual thing. Original. To je ten virtuální a teď ten původní. From here again. Yeah, totally different, because he needs to. Totálně jiný, protože on to reach another harmony, G major. So the good thing in the, in the sequence is that you can continue or you can stop it wherever you want, like, like in the highway. Tak to těch sekvencí, že můž, můžete zastavit na, v jakýkoliv tónině, nebo to můžete udělat celý kolečko znovu. It's like you are on the highway and you have to, you can choose where you have, where you want to leave, where you want to exit, you know. Je to jako by, když jdete po ránici, tak který uh, stěst použijete. And then we look to the end of the piece, which is also, he's a master of, of polyphony Bach, so you can see that here. Um, we normally don't, that's a problem, we no, normally don't appreciate the, all the um, exceptions in the music, if we know the music very well, because we are used to listen to piece and everything is, is very clear. Mm -hmm. But when we look for an, an alternative, like maybe a composer like Handel maybe would have done, then we understand, oh wow, this is Bach, uh, then we understand much better, you know? Ten Bach je vlastně absolutní gerius. To se to nevyslí. Já ti dám trochu lepší. Ale vlastně, když, yeah. když te, člověk je zvyklý na tu hudbu, tak ani skoro je to takový těžký to tam najít, tu krásu. Takže třeba když Handel se pos, uh, posadil k Bachově hudbě, tak prostě tam viděl strašně krásu. Prostě hezky se na to kouknout z toho pohledu analytického. I give a little example. Maybe you have... You all know the piece. Sounds good. Okay, I'll play again. Okay. Now another version. This is 
the Bach. I said, Le Bach. But this is wrong. <laughs> Nobody is doing this. Bach is only doing this in this piece. Because wow. after this, this, if you do this, in, if you study music in your theory, theory and you oh, write yeah. this, uh, the teacher That's would say, no, no, no. <laughs> you can't do that. <laughs> because doing this, it's absolutely forbidden, you know. So, what the, the normal thing would be, explain now because it's too complicated but this is one little exam example which I do always I always look for an alternative what could be possible and then to come back to the original and this gives you much more impression about the quality of the original No, že si budete vážit ty kvality toho originálu. <laughs> Now we come back to the piece. Um, I just need to see my version here. Yeah. Uh, I first uh, want to show you what a composer would do if he is somebody like Tilman Hofstock. Chci vám ukázat, co by skladatel udělal, kdyby se jmenoval Tilman Hofstock. I just continue with the idea of the sequences. But what Bach is doing is he opens the range completely with an entry of a fifth voice. So I have simplified the original that you can hear, or you can see much better here what is going on. So Thank you. Because we can't play all the voices all the time, he, he's doing this in a, in a very, very intelligent way that he divides the voices in, in, in some, like, like arpeggios. And this you can hear like this. This is the end, it's, it's, it's a big finish. Uh, with a choir, he could do it like I showed you in the simplified version that today is an entry of a fifth voice. 
ještě přijde pátý hlas a to jako by to začne úplně jednoduše a končí to zase. But a guitar is not possible, of course. A guitar je to nemožný. And see, so he integrate a very interesting uh, rhythmical pattern inside. Integroval velice zajímavý rytmický vzorec uh, nebo uh, pattern. So when I play it now, I don't know where I start to play. Maybe I start here. Yeah. So it's it's so intelligent how Bach compressed everything in a one minute fugato, which gives the impression of a much much longer piece. So I, I could talk much, much more about the piece, but there is no time. Um, so if you don't have questions, I would like to continue. Is that okay? Um, is the possibility to have some more water? That would be wonderful. Who's faster? Thank you. <laughs> Take care. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, let us have a little look to um, to the Fugue BWV 1000. Could you say that you are not Fugue BWV 1000? Yeah. Okay. So what we see um, are two versions. This this one which is originally for the violin. Um, so from this view we have a version for violin. And then one for for the lute, and there's another one for the organ. Yeah. Uh, the interesting thing is that you see here there is nothing. That means there is something added by Bach in the lute version. And uh, what is interesting in the themes Bach has uh, created we can be pretty sure that those composers they always tested a theme in all directions to use it you know so when you have a theme where it is a repetition of four notes, this gives you many, many options to put notes below or on top. Because on one hand, it's it's a very long note if you would play it as one note. On the other side, it is very good recognizable when you have pang, 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 you know? Also, you can use such a theme very good for this kind of stretto. That means when a theme is not finished and the next comes inside, uh, that... Yeah. So, like this, you know? Takže to se dá použít tak jako to... Stretto? Takže to znamená, že když jeden, jedno, to téma ještě neskončilo a začne to druhý a to druhý. O stretto, 
Brechta. Yes. And, and so uh, Bach, he, he always uh, used themes that he can create many, that he have many options, you know, that he has many options. In this fugue, it's very interesting because it is, it is not a fugue we normally know from Bach. Why? Because the, uh, the interludes in this fugue where we don't have the theme, že ty in, interludy nebo ty mezihry, kde to téma je absentní, there are a lot, many, many. Jich tam je hodně. And what we don't have is what we normally have two, one, two or three counterpoint subjects. Mm -hmm. A když máme, uh, normálně máme jeden, dva nebo tři kontrapunktový subjekty, What does it mean? The counterpoint subject means this is like the accompaniment person. Let's see, Donald Trump. <laughs> He is the theme. And the others are like that. You know. <laughs> so it depends if Donald Trump comes together, I don't know, with uh, Putin. <laughs> this is a very big counterpoint subject. You know, so so it's, it's like person. No, but it, it's a good example, you know, maybe more sympathetic persons uh, <laughs> than <laughs> these guys, you know. But what, what it means is that you have a, a normally, a, if you have a less good personality in the theme, then you have more options for others. If the personality of the theme is very strong, there's not so much space very often mm -hmm. for, for counterpoint of things. And he decided to create a very short theme. Bom, 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 ba, da, dim, bom, bom. It's a very short theme. Which is very strong and very, it's always there in, in, in this, uh, um, when he presented the theme. Je tam vždycky, když, když je vlastně to téma vstupuje, když je prezentováno. And there's always space then for the interludes after. Pak tam je vždycky čas a prostor na ty mezihry, interlude. But not so much for a characteristic Ale counterpoint. Ale ne, ne moc pro charakteristický nějaký bohatý kontrapunkt. And we have only one. A máš jen jeden. It is this. Here. Bom, bim, bom, bim. And it only comes six or seven times in the whole piece. Because normally guitarists play. And for the reason that this model doesn't come so often, We should take care to it. A když teda právě z toho důvodu, že to, tato moda tam ne, není tak často, tak bychom se ani měli k ní chovat pěkně. Back. Di, di, da, di, da, da. You can see it. Um, it is. No, no, it's the streaming thing. It, it's. Oh, it's, it's later. Oh, yeah. oh, wow. Okay. So that's interesting because here after counterpoint, di, 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 da, but it's di, di, da, da. So it is the B. Which is not correctly, you know. But it comes, it, it, it goes into in another voice, but it's still there, you know. Yeah. And then what we have very, very often in the piece, we don't have the time, I cannot uh, show you always, that we have the hidden theme. So you see, here's nothing. It's just a theme here. And in the violin, 
I will play from here, yeah? yeah. So you can follow what I do. And he starts the interlude. But when you look a little deeper, even when you see da da dum, take care, da da dum, because it's a part of the thing, it's a little bit like da 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 dum, da da dum. So take care, is there something around? So, and then we have a C and a C. So when, you, so when I start again from maybe from here, then I could uh, I play the original. But these are uh, uh, semi quavers in, in instead of quavers. Di da di da, di da di da da. So, yeah, but it's it's a, so it's a complete theme there. And this we have very, very often in this fugue. I, I will give you one, one little, just one little uh, very funny thing which I'm sure you don't know. Let us have a look to this part. You all know it, it is. Of course, of course you know it. So, here we have the theme, you know? Yeah. I'm not the person who found it. <laughs> the I don't get the copyright. <laughs> it is Robert Schumann. Robert Schumann. Yeah, and, and he wrote, to be honest, a very a terrible version. He wrote from the, from the from the cello suites and from the and from the from the violin sonata. It's not very nice because it's accompaniment for piano. It is just chords, you know. But there are some things which is amazing, you know, and it is, it, is, it, it is worth to look inside. It is that, for example, that he found the theme inside, you know, which I never saw, you know, uh, many, many years later. And maybe for, for polyphony, virtual, virtual polyphony, maybe we look to this one. This is very, very interesting and shows maybe everything what you can find in bass music. And because we can see three versions, violin, lute and organ, you see the different, different technique of, of the structure Bach writes. I will play the violin version. And then you can hear. Now, how can we bring out? We cannot do. <laughs> so we can't do that. So the trick is to bring out everything is 
to like a metamorphosis to or to jump into this voice and then to bring out that voice and finally and our brain brings everything together so what so what we hear is a polyphony not like this a polyphony like this because it's it's to be jump into vertikální ale vidíme i lineární ty polyfony and the rest is done, done by, by our brain a zbytek uh, si to mozek poskládá so like So, as an interpreter, we are a part of the composer. Jako part, jako, uh, jako interpreti jsme vlastně součást trošku toho skládání, protože si to můžeme upravit. So when we now look what Bach has done in the lute version, and I'm not sure that everything is done by Bach, we don't have a manuscript by Bach. Uh, to, co dělal tady uh, vlastně v té loutnové verzi, ale nemáme jistotu, jestli to opravdu dělal Bach, protože prostě loutné so, nejsou... As you see here, the, the the changing of the bass here on the how he um, on which point he put it. So in the lute version, everything is much more flat, in my opinion. interesting maybe to play sometimes the violin version because it has more it's more likely and this is the organ version can see how we compensate he does the same as in the in the lute version Víte, že, uh, on vlastně dělá to, samý, když, to to bring the bass on the heavy beat když, uh, vlastně ten bass tam vstupuje na, na ten, na he, době, vlastně. on the other side he brings out much better here the character of the upper voice ale na druhé straně zase uh, tu charakteristiku toho Listen to the version here and what he's doing here. Yeah, so the difference. So yeah. maybe it could be a good idea when we use the lute version, maybe to grab something which is not too difficult from the organ version. Třeba vzít si uh, kousek z té loutnové verze, když, ne, nebo když to je těžký z té varhaní verze, anebo naopak, no, tam vlastně yeah. je tam. So, unfortunately, but this piece there, so I could talk an hour more. Já mohu o tomhle mluvit ještě hodinu nebo dvě. Um, I don't know, do we have 50 minutes more than because we started 50 minutes later? I don't know when you continue in the what the day is. Uh, yes, no, like 20 past 12. And we do it on, on, uh, uh, at... Uh, until one or we could take 10 minutes more. Maybe one, we, we finish officially at 12.30, no? Uh, at one mostly. Two hours? No, at one hour. Ah, okay. So when I when are we continue, maybe uh, another 25 minutes. Is that okay, or or 20 minutes? 20 minutes. Okay. Are we start? Are we talk a little? We talk a little faster. Huh? What do you think? <laughs> <laughs> okay. L let us go maybe to 998. Uh, On this piece, sometimes I talk. 
two hours only on that piece. Ani když jsem mladý, tyhle sklady jsem mluvil jiné rodiny. So talking about polyphony is is uh, also in the prelude you can find it. And the, the prelude and the fugue and the lecco are very connected through these through these three notes. And the fugue and the, and the allegro are connected yeah, with, with the, the motif, so with these the three notes. Mm -hmm. And so when we look to the prelude, uh, to the same conflict I started so my conference. We have a wonderful melody, which is just can play like a melody, but we have also hopefully. But we can show a little bit the dialogue in the voice and not to lose the wonderful melody. the idea of the melody and also the dialogue between the voices. And this is very interesting. I don't know, I have the prelude here. Maybe I have the prelude here. Let me see. Here we have it. Yes. So when we look here, when the sequence starts, so we have a, a very regular bass. But we have also this melody, melody in three parts. And now what we can do is now <coughs> with we do this walking bass. Yes. So we, we, we can have a counterpoint of, of this melody. And this melody also can be divided. Wonderful dialogue between inside the melody and also this walking bass, walking bass which gives us a, a very good idea of 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 language of in this time because the the basso continuo the the, the bass players mm -hmm. like, like the harpsichord the lute or all this accompaniment part and, and the cello uh, they mm -hmm. are the guides. Ty doprovodný nástroje, jako ten uh, varhany, nebo čelo, nebo bas, uh, to jsou ty pro, uh, průvodci. <laughs> so they are the real boss, but also in the back, always in the back. So the soloists are here, but without the boss in the back, nothing works. He's the director, or she. Ale, ale ten opravdový základ je vlastně za doprovodný. So we have... It's very 
complex, but you can follow no, the idea now, this dialogue there, and you could play a bit more free, even more, but the bass gives the last uh, Maybe, maybe it could be very good uh, uh, imagination. Yeah, now let's have a look to the fugue. But you know, it's very, very important to understand. Many things around, you know. Okay, so this fugue, it's one of the best fugues we have by Bach. I will play something for you first. It's something very different. I will play a choral for you. Bach choral. you can hear is completely polyphonic structure in four voices for guitar three and four voices mixed so that is the sheet was in polyphonic structure for three and four voices the guitar i played all the chorals about 400 yeah since yeah i played asi všechny těch 400 chorál for thinking to to publish some of them for one guitar or two guitars to se mě publikovat některý and there is not a single choral which is not a masterwork a není, neexistuje jediný, jak se říká, choral, choral který není masterpiece. Prostě. Maybe to, to explain a choral for those people who doesn't know, but do, do not know, a choral is always a uh, four voices piece, you know, which has a, a vocal line, a, a, a melody line, which is normally um, a religious song, you know. Choral je vlastně, to jsou uh, náboženský písně, kde, má, uh, kde máte ten Melody, and instead of maybe other composers who mostly uh, give the harmonization, he wrote a three other voices. Mr. Vlastně do provodu, jakoby, uh, jenom harmonizace, tam dal i vlastně jiný hlasy. I will play you now another chorus, and not, uh, just a theme. <laughs> Wie du willst, so schickst mit mir. But, uh, you don't need to uh, translate that. It, it's, it's a Bach choral. I'll play it again. Another one is called Ach Herr, vergib all unsere Schuld. The third one, from Himmel hoch, da komme ich her. It's very famous. They are all a bit similar. But when I combine now the first part of the first choral and the second part the third choral první část prvního chorálu a druhou část třetího I want 
here to say. Um, maybe I now show you something else. This is from the Bach Fugue. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds like a choral, no? <laughs> so we don't know what is what had been in Bach's brain when he wrote this. But the similarity, simil similarity, you say ah, similarity, mm -hmm. to, to Bach chorus, it's, it's very close, I guess. And the first part of this fugue has many aspects of, 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 of choral character. A tahle, tahle první část má spoustu charakterist, nebo má spoustu podobností um, k charakteru chorálu. And what's interesting, the first part, which seems to be much more compressed than the second part of the fugue, the middle part. The, ta první část, která vypadá více komprimovaně než ta druhá část, je na ní zajímavý, že... So this second part, which is, comes here, I show you, uh, seems to be much more like a prelude, prelude-like, much lighter. Ta druhá část je lehčí, jako preludy. But it's very interesting that the first part, you all guitarists, you know that the first part is much easier to handle, to play, than, the, than the middle part. Ta první část je jednodušší pro kytaristu. And why it is like this, I will explain later. <laughs> There's still time, 10 minutes, okay. Um, in this fugue, and, and opposite to the, to the other fugue I talked before, we have two very important counterpoint subjects. Takže v kontrastu od té první fugy, o které jsme mluvili, tady jsou um, taky dva aspekty kontrapunktu. One thing very important is this appoggiatura motif. Bum, body, bum, body. Do you have it here? Uh, tady ten um, appoggiaturní motif. Um, like resolving, resolving notes, you know, a, a motive which means to resolving and to resolve a note. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it, um, but I can play it when you hear it. Resolution. Leading to yeah. Yeah. This is one counterpoint Resolution. element which is very important in this fugue <laughs> and, and very characteristic. Mm -hmm. And another thing which is very important is this little thing. Da da di di da da di da. I can play. Další věc, která je důležitá. Yeah. So we have two elements beside the theme, which need to be. We 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 have to pay pay attention a lot. Takže máme dva prvky mimo ten motiv nebo to téma, na které Máme dávat pozor, nebo... So it is not always the theme, because the theme is very important. Není but to vždycky jenom ten tým, ten but sometimes we tým. need to move to another, let us say all other persons also are important to talk, you know, for a discussion. Not only one person, not only Trump, you know. Tak ne vždycky je to nejdůležitější v tom nejsilnějším motivu, nebo v tom nejsilnějším tématu. Něco jako... I ostatní lidi se chtějí vyjádřit, nebo je dobrý je poslouchat, nejenom toho Trumpa. Trumpínsky. Trumpínsky. <laughs> so, <coughs> when you look to here, when, when we have here an entry of the theme, you see this? Oh, oh here, well, let, no, sorry, here, yeah? So it is very important then also to show this element, and we'll show you that. Unfortunately, when we start with the theme, we also have this counterpoint here, but we don't need to show it too much because we also have it before the theme starts. I will play it from here. So 
this was very, very German, you know, very quadrato, no, no, to show what. Here's the, this and this, this. So, so the important thing is when we play this fugue that we go through the voices. The same as I said before, we cannot follow all the voices all the time. We need to move. Tak se v těch hlasech pohybovat. Ne vždycky se držet jednoho nebo hrát všechno na, hra, na hlas. I want to show that. As always, we are also a creator of the piece, you know, what, what, what to show and what we want not to show. We are the interpreters. We are the problem in this fugue, or our luxury problem, is that there is even many, many more, much more to find. And I will give you some three, four little examples. Ten luxusní problém je, že tam je spoustu dalších věcí, které tam musíme najít. Because there is a theme where you never would find it. <laughs> je tam téma, které nikdy nenajdete. Let us have a look here. Pokud In the beginning. Podívat tady na začátku. You have this nice counterpointal, this let's say a counterpointal melody. I will play this. Kontrapunktní melodie. Together with the theme. Augmentation, so not in the uh, in the, the Tématam, quarters. Tématam je v tom so we have it when you have. Very clear, you know. So, the theme is also in the It's a complete theme, is there? And we have even more when we look here. It's very good hidden. So, the, the theme starts here. And then we have interlude. When you look here, from here, we have that. It's there. It's very clear, yeah? 
When I play it from here, you can hear it very clear. I play it from here. Can I go outside? Interesting thing is that it starts in the middle with the B, with the G, G and in the bass. Začíná to v gaučku, tím gaučkem. Oh, sorry, if we open the B, then there's the G in the bass, the F sharp in the bass, yeah. the G in the middle voice, yeah. and the E, F sharp and G sharp in the bass. So it's changed. Přeskakuje těch basů do do různých dalších. And at the end, we always have it here. It is it's terrible. So when we look here. Um, mm, it's here, yes. So when you look here, so we have it also here. Then we have this is the A. You can see. We we'll play it. Uh, Here. Well, we also here. Uh, yeah, and you have. So it is always there, the thing. Mm -hmm. And the most strange thing is. And they when you look <laughs> here, you see the theme here? Yes? Okay. I will play it. Everybody knows that. But what not so many people know that the theme is also here. So oh, it starts yeah, from yeah. the A. So we yeah. have. I'm sorry. Uh, and, and no, it's. I will start again. here, yeah. That's the theme. So we have it just on one, one rabbit, yes. Yeah. Three so minutes. I, I need three minutes. Okay. The last thing what I want to show you is when we are here, starting from here, you always see two voices, no? Bach had integrated always three voices. At the end, I want to show you this. You can see it from, it's a bit small, but I have to do it like this. I will play, um, Just one hour. I would do it without music. Okay, I will show it from 
and it's so small everything from here yeah uh, no. you can you can see it from here mm -hmm. yeah okay so what we see mm -hmm. normally it's just one minute so i will play in the in the normal way you normally see it What is inside? Yes, I, I think we should stop it now and just in the middle of the piece. Thank you very much for your wonderful work, for, uh, for Adam, uh, for the exciting. <laughs> and thank you very much for your patience. I know some things are very complicated and... <laughs> Uh, do, do we have five minutes for questions, or is it normally we have until one o'clock, eight minutes for questions? Yes, so there are eight minutes for questions. <laughs> We're not German, you know. Tak jestli máme čas, tak tak můžeme otevřít otázkový okno na deset minut a jestli máte nějaký dotaz, tak si můžete ptát. No questions. <laughs> Maybe some. Yeah. I have this question here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, no, uh, vlastně, že uh, uh, mě zajímá vlastně nějaký jako názor, nebo jestli má na to nějaký systém, uh, pan profesor, co se týče jakoby nástupu hlasu, když je to třeba na nějaký poslední době lehký, mm -hmm. a pak je tam třeba ta uh, první doba, a co jo, se týče. Jo. Jo. Co se týče vlastně metra té pulzace, kdy vlastně zvýraznit, který tomu zvýraznit víc, jestli jako vždycky ten nástup třeba na lehký době poslední a potom trošku tu první dobu. Or that that line, um, do you just keep emphasizing that beat? Like do you with do an accent, the, the mm. accent? Ba, di, 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 like this. Yeah. So he's asking, what's your opinion about the next beat after, like the the one? Di, di, the, the di, da, da, di, like this. Yeah, like the strong strong beat. If it's 
O ti, da, da, di, o oh, what you mean. No, no, že vlastně, že vlastně asi je potřebu zvýrazit i ten nástup a třeba i tu těžkou dobu, kde se tam má jako nějakou hierarchii, mm-hmm. jsou snad. A máte nějaký příklad třeba uh, nějaký? No, no, třeba, třeba tady, tady v té v chůze, no, že, mm-hmm. že, že třeba, nebo na kolik je důležitý dodržovat to metru, anebo jestli stačí zvýrazit ten mm-hmm. nástup. So how important is it to, to keep the like strong beat? Is it strong beat and hear it? Or if the entrance of the motif is on a weak beat, do you still need to emphasize the strong beat, the one after the four? Or can you... <laughs> <laughs> it's your choice. I mean, of course, you know, uh, what, what I learned very often when there is a, especially when you have a, 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 a fast movement, when you have de, da, de, de, you never would do ba, de, in any case. No, but if, it's not, ba, ba, de, bum, be, da, dum, bum, ba, so both, yeah, ba, ba, bum, ba, de, dum, so it's mm-hmm. both things. Like in a, in a, when you have a theme on the jig, bum, bum, ba, dum, bum, so you have mm-hmm. the, Ba, because it's a jump, as a bum, ba, but you also have the heavy beat. So it's. It doesn't make sense of it. I said in the beginning, take care to that. Here I think it's important because you have. So it, then it's important that we have this offbeat. But if the office da diddle da dim bum be da diddle da da diddle da diddle da da di, then it doesn't make sense to keep always the accent, you know. So if you say if you say to to nash you say the taktový linky, jak se říká, tak vlastně to tam tolik důležitý není. Ale když se jede prostě raz da 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 a ten motiv přijde na tu čtvrtou, tak je, takže tam bych ho zvíraz, tam bych zvíraznil obrovsky. It depends also how light or heavy this theme is. Especially, you know, when you when you have the the, the this this uh, this jig and you play it very heavy. But it, it depends on what you want to show, you know. It's not only a question of the theme, it's a question of heavy and not heavy beat, you know, that it's, that, but it's a priority. It's, it's what I said in the beginning, uh, on, and it's in, the, in this show, we, we have this basso continuo, which is always do, do, do. It's just a heavy beat. The basso continuo, so, but how heavy, you know, we don't know. The same with articulation, so it doesn't make any <coughs> sense. I hear this huge sometimes. Ba-ba-dum, ba-ba-dum. Doesn't make any sense because it's not a scherzo, it's bom body. Not bop Too much, you know, it's too much staccato for the character, in my opinion, you know. It depends on the tempo, it depends on so many uh, um, aspects how you want to accentuate a note or, or no, or what is the break. But what is the uh, the idea of of, of 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 the rest before the theme? That's a very important question. Because sometimes we hear mm, da da di da di. It's a pity because it's ooh, da da di. So we have the heavy beat. It's very important. It's not da da da. I don't know, you know, it's, it's, it's a very interesting question and there are many mm-hmm. different opinions about that. And this is what I said at the beginning, we shouldn't be too dogmatic, you know. Thank you very much. Mě by zajímalo, jak, by to, jak to měl Bach ve svých době sloupnou, jako jestli na to trošku uměl, nebo jestli měl nějaký loupnistu, který to přepsal do, vlastně do těch tabulatur, mm-hmm. nebo jestli on to psal někdy do tabulatur, nebo... If, if you have an information about Bach and his lute uh, skill, did he 
play the lute and do he have a person? Oh, this is a long, long question. I mean, we don't have the time to talk about that. The only thing I can say, <coughs> if he would have been, uh, I mean, he needed to know the lute anyway, because Museum otherwise 995 wouldn't have been possible because this is perfectly written for the lute. There's some notes you cannot play, but it's, he didn't fill so many things inside because he knew about the limit of the lute. To be honest about some notes and some pieces, then oh, I have the doubt about him as a player. I would say he knew the lute, but as a player, I'm sure he would have written in a different way when you compare it to the violin music and to the harpsichord and organ music. On the other hand, when we imagine Bach was a lute player, then absolutely for sure we can say that maybe Prilf Fugalegro and 995 was the only piece he, he wrote for the for the lute and maybe the Fugue Thousand, which is not a manuscript. Supposing that he was a lute player? No, no, but if he would have been a lute player, right. so 997 never would have been possible as a lute piece. Because in this way we have it, it's impossible. As okay, as so even 996 is impossible no, as, as a lute piece, because it's too much for, for two hands. But it's an interesting no, question. No, Finally, no, we no. don't know. We have our series. I don't think he was a lute player, but we don't know. We found two lutes in his, uh, when he died, he has two lutes, but which does not say that he was a lute player. Maybe he, he used the lute just to, to practice, to look how it works, because as a violin player, of course, you have maybe the skill to do little things on it. You know. Because I know contemporary composer, pianists, they also try not to play the guitar, but they, they look to the guitar and they, to see what's possible or not possible. That's a very difficult question. <laughs> I have heard something about lute cembalo. Is it true or not? I, be, I believe in this, you know. I believe in this, and this is the old question that uh, that uh, 996, which is also not uh, in, uh, exists in a manuscript, but it's written on the lute work of das Lautenwerk, you know. Mm -hmm. This Lautenwerk was this kind of lute harpsichord, and it existed. But we don't have any of these instruments, but we have the plans of the, the construction. So we, the instruments we have today are also only uh, rebuilt, mm -hmm. reconstructed after the, 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 the diseni, the sketch, the sketch, the sketch you know, the, the, and everything which was written down about the construction. Is it like the dulcimer? Like or the no, 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 it's nothing to do with that. No, no. But it is an instrument which is is uh, has this the same claviatura, mm -hmm. and but has the the belly of of a lute. You know, <laughs> it's very strange, and and strings are different, and it sounds a little bit like a lute. And Bach he had so one of these instruments. But but anyhow, we can say that the lute is not an important point in his life, you know. It's not a priority in Bach, I, I, I think. So thank you. In 
one sentence mention the mindset of Bach when composing that. Uh, uh, what do you think? Did he calculate all these uh, options uh, <laughs> within the team? Did, did he intend it or did he just feel it? Co myslíš? On to jenom cítil, anebo to všechno plánoval a je v tom, je v tom uh, design? What a difficult <laughs> question for an answer which is not possible to give. Um, because <laughs> if, if when you go further, the, the, when he created his pieces and melodies, was there any religion intention? You know, this would be the next question, you know. We don't, finally we don't know it, you know. But what I can say, when, we, when you look to a big, a big, big a piece like the Art of Fugue, Kunst der Fuge, you know the piece? So we have 23 fugues uh, based on one theme. Of course, it must be like that, that we, when somebody writes such an enormous work of two hours, that he test a theme. And I think we, we never should, I think he was a genius, but he was also a very hard worker. And he's not a person, ah, I have an idea, I'll do this, and then he's doing this. I mean, he, he was a great uh, improviser. There's no other question. Many of his themes, for the, especially for the organ, comes from improvisation. This is a very strange theme, very long. It comes from improvisation, very clearly. But on the other hand, when you look, we have very rare uh, documents of, of changings, but the French suites, which we unfortunately we don't have in complete manuscripts, but what we have are manuscripts when he was younger, the manuscripts when he was older. Or he was working on Or when he wrote the second part of the Voltemberg Klavier, because this was based on many, many old things when he was young. This is a cycle of 24 prints and fugues. So what we can, oh sorry, uh, what we can see there is, so you look to the first verse and say, wow, that's amazing. And then you look to the second version, how is that possible, it's even better. You know? <laughs> So and, 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 and this I think when we when we see all his so when, when I showed you my version of of, of the Triviste, the three version three uh, voices version on harpsichord, so what I finally did I didn't I composed in a way, but what I did is when you have the knowledge of all his harpsichord music, you understand a little bit his his language, you know, and also him, he has, as a genius, he has many endings of phrasings, maybe 10, 15 different endings yeah, you can find. Or you have a melody, da da di da da, and then you look to the counterpoint to which he created to one little melody, and you see it in, in 20 or 30 pieces. I'm oh, sorry. Když se věnujete jeho hudbě tak moc, tak v tom začnete vidět ten jeho jazyk. A vlastně, když už tam vidíte nějakou linku tady, tak už vás jakoby podvědomě napadne, tady určitě bude nějaký kontrapunkt. A on tam je. A že to je prostě krásný najednou zjistit, že taky měl v tom jeho géniu nějaký jakoby, jazyk. So sometimes when I do a, a transcription, like from the cello suites, and I show this sometimes in, in the lectures, so they have a melody and I show you can do the counterpoint like this, like this, like this. We have 10 options, maybe. Uh, Everything yeah, should I'm sound like Bach. But Bach was a, a very, very pragmatic person that he not only chosen for, for the, for the uh, of course, in general, for the choreography of the piece, that you cannot choose this if it doesn't fit to the, to the rest, but it, it fits to the little thing, but also to the idiom of the instrument. That's a lot. Třeba když dělá přepisy z čelových suit, tak říká studentům, tady máš téma a můžeš udělat, můžeš tam přidat tenhle, tenhle, tenhle hlas, anebo tuhle linku, 
A aby, aby to fun, prostě, vlastně to je v pohodě, ale ten bach to uměl prostě udělat, že nejenom, že to fungovalo s těma dalšíma, všechno to navazovalo, ale ještě bral v potaz vlastně um, barvu toho nástroje a So on one way it's very complex, but I decide if you have the time to go deeper inside and to learn the language, you know. Takže je, na jedné straně je to hodně komplexní, ale jestli máte ten čas se do toho ponořit do hloubky a naučit se ten jazyk, then it's very important to know that Bach never um, enlarge a piece and make it more complex with adding chords. Je důležité uvědomit si, že Bach nikdy nenafouknul nebo ne, neudělal z malé skladby velkou tím, že přidal noty nebo přidal akordy. It's always correspondence between voices and for this Vždycky reason... Tak, jakoby ten dialog nebo korespondence uh, mezi těma hlasem. Also how Bach uses the rests is a very, very important point as, as a part of the language. Jak Bach know. využívá pauzy je velice důležitý element v jeho kompozici. So, Of course, when you have not the knowledge about the language, it is better to add nothing when you when you <laughs> make a transcription. Když nemáte ten nejste obeznámení s tím jazykem jeho nebo s tím jeho vlastním stylem. But it is never the original idea when he enlarges a piece or he, he you play a piece from the cello on the harpsichord. It doesn't make any sense to leave it like this with not adding nothing. But yeah. never did like that. When you play from a cello to yeah, when, when you play a cello piece on the harpsichord, you transfer it to the harpsichord mm-hmm. and just to leave it as it is, you know, to keep yeah. the, the, the original things, not to add nothing. This is never the sense of Bach. Mm-hmm. No, it's, it's all, all, it always it's thinking uh, to enlarge a piece, to add things. Because some guitar players, they say, no, it's better not to add nothing because this is original Bach. No, original Bach is to add. But the difficult thing is how to add. <laughs> That is the problem. So, když třeba přepis z čelové skladby do, hard, do toho čembala, je, nemůžeš to nechat tak, jak to je z toho čela, nevím, prostě zahrát na čembalo. Že ta idea toho bacha byla vždycky přidat. Ale jak přidat? <laughs> jo, prostě to, tam je ta otázka toho, jak, jak to udělat. Že přidat umí každý, ale jak přidat? This is a very special field of, of, of how to add bass notes or other notes. I think we are over the time, I guess. We have to finish here.